Um, well, first of all, comrades, uh, yes, the life of and ideas of Lenin in 45 minutes. A uh, bit of a tricky task, you might say, given the fact that his uh, life covered the most stormiest period in uh, Russian, and you could say in world history. So uh, what I'd have to do is to touch on, I think, some of the main points, the main ideas, and hopefully this will serve to uh, whet your appetite so that you yourself can uh, delve into more deeply these ideas. Um, because in the reality, they're an application, a concrete application of Marxism to the epoch in which Lenin lived. Uh, Lenin's always seen as the, one of the four great teachers of Marxism, Marx, Engels, Lenin, and Trotsky. And you could say it was after the, after the death of Engels and of Marx, it was Lenin who took up the defense of orthodox Marxism. Um, and not only took it up, but applied it in such a way that he was able to build a, a revolutionary party that led the working class in Russia to power, which uh, was the first time that the working class had seized power and held on to it. It was a brief period of the Paris Commune and uh, transformed the entire world. And that's why, uh, as was explained, Lenin uh, is being demonized by the bourgeoisie. And the attempt is obviously to discredit Lenin, discredit his ideas. And this is, has become a bit of a, a cottage industry. There are book after book after book is produced about the Russian Revolution, and particularly Lenin's role, all detrimental. People like uh, Robert Service, for, the, for instance, the three volume um, uh, uh, on, on Lenin and the Russian Revolution, and uh, it's incredibly starts off, uh, pity uh, for Lenin, the politician is hardly in order, he says. Very sympathetic view, of course. Uh, he was a merciless uh, polemicist, a ruthless terrorist, and an unrepentant defender of probably everything done in his name and his party. It goes on in that similar vein throughout the book, really. An attempt just to discredit and denigrate and the reason why it's, uh, it's intensified now is because of this epoch of crises where millions of workers are beginning to uh, question the capitalist system and look for a way out. Therefore, the ideas of Lenin would be, would be particularly attractive to all those thinking workers at this particular time, and particularly of young people. And therefore, we have to rescue Lenin, if you like, on the one hand from the slanders of the, uh, of the bourgeois, but also the caricature given by Stalinism. Uh, somehow Lenin was a, uh, a superman and did everything perfectly well, and they tried to, to use that in order to carry through their own, uh, for their own interest, their own particular revisionist policies uh, as far as the bureaucracy we were concerned. Uh, of course, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, many of these, hero, these worship heroes of, of Lenin jumped ship and sided with the bourgeois counter-revolution and then have uh, spewed out all the, the, the rubbish uh, talked about Lenin ever since. So therefore, we have a, quite a task to, to rescue uh, uh, Lenin. Of course, as I, I said, he stood on, on the shoulders of Marx and Engels, who weren't from the working class, as we know. Uh, they came from the upper class, or the more, more upper middle class. And the same case was, was for, for Lenin. But nevertheless, despite that fact, he put himself on the standpoint of the working class of the revolution and became the, one of the greatest revolutionary leaders of the working class uh, that we, what we know. And uh, that uh, uh, development of Lenin, as uh, Trotsky pointed out, Lenin didn't begin as Lenin. Lenin evolved into the role, if you like, under the conditions that he faced. But it also has showed his individual character of someone who showed determination and a meticulous attitude to ideas and conquering those ideas. As I said, he came from a kind of well-to-do well fa uh, family. His father was a, uh, an inspector of schools, quite up, high up in the bureaucracy, if you like. And he had a, quite a decent uh, education, a grammar school education, and went on to study in university, study law in university, as a matter of fact. But of course, um, perhaps one of the uh, turning points in Lenin's life was the um, uh, hanging, the murder of his brother, his elder brother, who became influenced 
by the ideas that were prevalent at the time in Russia, called the, the, of the Narodniks. That is, that of, um, because we are perhaps as a background, the communists are, are, are aware that Russia was a, a totalitarian autocratic state uh, ruled by a czar, ruled by landlords in particular. It hadn't uh, gone through a bourgeois democratic revolution like in the West. And um, uh, although the, the elements of capitalism were rapidly developing in the 80s, 1890s, many of it with the importation of foreign capital from Britain, Germany, France, and so on, which built big, big industries at that time. And of course, uh, it sucked in the, uh, the peasantry that were desperate for work and created a virgin working class at that moment. Prior to that, obviously, the, 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 the fight was on uh, of, of the peasantry, if you like, uh, and against the old order. And uh, therefore, there were very, very heroic ideas emerged of challenging the system. And one was here at the Land of Freedom uh, Party, uh, developed, developed into, into the Narodnik organization, which attempted to um, a go to the, the mainly young students, actually intellectuals and so on, who broke from their families and went to the countryside to try and convince the, the peasantry to enlighten them to have a revolution. Uh, and they thought it, there could be a, a peasant revolution that could bypass capitalism. But nevertheless, they were, they were very heroic in attempting to, do, to carry out this fundamental change against the repression of the czarist ap apparatus, uh, which was extremely uh, reactionary at that particular uh, time. Uh, later, they evolved, uh, because, because that movement failed, they turned towards individual terrorism. That is the idea of uh, eliminating, particularly uh, the czar, the czarist officials, hated police chiefs and, and such individuals. They wanted to topple the regime through assassination, if you like. And then this also attracted a lot of young idealist people um, who wanted to, to obviously overthrow rotten czarist regime. And one of those was Alexander, which is Lenin's brother. But he was caught, and he was hanged along with a number of others. Obviously, that had a big effect on Lenin, uh, although he's only a young, a young lad, in, 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 in effect, still in school. But nevertheless, there would be a general sympathy amongst the uh, uh, young people and so on for the actions of, of the, um, of the, of the Narodniks. And no doubt, in, in the early period, Lenin was influenced by these ideas, attracted to these ideas. Um, Although then uh, Marxism began to percolate into, into Russia, uh, mainly as a result of a split in the, in the Narodniks and the, and the emergence of a figure called George Plekhanov, who became the father of Russian Marxism. And he broke from these ideas of, of, of individual terrorism, uh, uh, got in contact with, uh, actually, with uh, Marx and Engels. And uh, for, they formed a very small group. They were obviously. Uh, in exile because conditions in Russia were suppressive. So they actually formed a small nucleus of five people in, uh, in, in, um, in Geneva. And uh, they began to publish uh, small, if you like, Marxist literature to be smuggled back into Russia itself. But this is a tiny group, you know, and you see, we're talking about 1883 when they formed the, uh, um, the Emancipation of Labor Group of five individuals. Incredible. And this, from this group emerges the Russian Social Democratic Party, emerges Bolshevism, and emerges the, the whole question of world revolution. From this tiny, tiny little group, the, this little embryo that existed. Of course, uh, Lenin himself uh, wasn't an immediate mark, Marxist, not, not at all. He was well read uh, and uh, learned a lot of uh, languages. He came across the capital in particular. His brother had a copy of Capital. He, he looked at it and was very serious. He, if you want to ca characterize Lenin as an individual, he was a very serious individual and uh, a determined, someone who was determined to look into some certain questions in the depth that it required. He had a very serious attitude to ideas, you could say. Uh, and that didn't just apply to, to Marxism. But uh, he came with these, obviously, uh, a capital actually was translated into Russian far earlier than, in, than the English edition, for instance, because the Russian czarist uh, 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 censors looked at the, one look at the capital and thought, Jesus Christ, no one can understand this. <laughs> uh, and so therefore passed it. But, um, and uh, nevertheless, the, these, these ideas, anti during uh, were smuggled in, a number of other uh, 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 Marxist texts which uh, Lenin, because of, uh, again, because affected by the radical situation, the, the crisis of the intelligentsia, actually, at the time, began to look for alternative ideas. And that, 
And one of these ideas, obviously, was the ideas of Marxism, which, which he, he, well, it was a growing interest, if you like. He was not a, a revolutionary Democrat or a, or a Marxist uh, in, his early, uh, in his early life. That, he acquired that, if you like. He, he came to it. He struggled to, get, to gain it. And once he did, he mastered it. And that's the sort of, if you like, uh, qualities of, of, of Lenin. And when he, uh, of course, when his brother was, was uh, hanged, the family who looked on in, by, in disdain, if you like, uh, Lenin managed to get to um, Kazan University, but whether in a, I think within six weeks he'd been expelled because there'd been a movement of students which he participated in. But uh, he actually stood his uh, law degree uh, uh, outside of the university. Uh, his mother tried to campaign for him to get back in, but the, the, the authorities were refusing, but they allowed him to sit his exams outside of university. And he got a first class degree in, uh, in, in law. And he said it was the shortest career in, uh, of anybody that, uh, at that time because obviously it was a, it, that's when he had a, a burning interest in Marxism. He was discussing the local groups. He, he started to contact older people who were neurotics and so on, discussing with them. But eventually he ends up going to um, St. Petersburg, you know, it's the, the capital of, of Russia. And uh, 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 at this time, the circles are forming in Russia. Mark, workers' circles, mark, left wing circles. That had taken place. Um, and uh, in 1895, he, together with a man called Martov and a few other individuals, organized a, a circle in, 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 um, in, in Petersburg, which they call um, the uh, struggle for the emancipation of the working class group. Bit of a long name, but there we are. Uh, and um, Begin, begin to carry out agitation in, in, the, in the work. Other groups are forming elsewhere. Trotsky actually formed a group in the south, in south uh, of Russia. Um, so these groups are springing up. Um, and the idea was to try and fuse these groups together. Social democratic ideas, obviously, were dominating Germany, uh, France at this time. The Second International was, was, was being built in 1889, uh, founded. And therefore, this, this was um, obviously. Uh, this group was also in touch, I can't go into all the details, but in touch with Engels before he died. And uh, they, they were dedicated, but they were in the hell, they were in the fighting, a, 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 an uphill struggle, could you imagine? The, the strongest Tsarist regime, you know, of autocracy and a reaction, a tiny in, a nucleus of people in exile. There were small groups forming in Russia itself, and Lenin forms this uh, group with, 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 with uh, Marta. But very quickly, He's arrested. They tried to organize a paper. He's arrested and sent into exile into Siberia. He joined with another uh, person called uh, uh, Krupskaya, uh, who uh, becomes his partner. And then while he's in, in, in uh, exile, he studies. That's the main thing. What else can you do? You know, uh, it, uh, communications are very difficult. Or he tried to keep in touch with Martov, who was also exiled as well, but to somebody else. And uh, he studies and studies and studies Marxism, also translates books. Uh, the Webb's book, for instance, Industrial Democracy, he translates, but he reads and reads. And, and, we, and, we, and, and he begin, if you like, becomes mature as, as a Marxist, but not just a Marxist, but becomes, becomes recognized as more of a leading Marxist, if you like, and so was able to uh, write and carry out polemics against a tendency which had emerged at that time, what they're called, it was mentioned last night, the economist tendency. And that was an idea of, well, the workers should fight only on economic questions, in effect. Uh, the political sh struggle, well, they can be left more to the liberals. And obviously, uh, Lenin was, uh, and, and, and Plekhanov in particular, as, as I mentioned, can campaign and, and uh, uh, attack these particular ideas, explaining, no, on the contrary, you know, that. Uh, Politics and economics and even the theory, as, as we explained last night, are part and parcel of the struggle of the working class it's, uh, movement itself. Uh, but obviously, these ideas were attractive. You know, the ideas to keep on the way, you know, the economic questions, and they, they had quite an influence. And there, but it was this uh, small group in that, that, that fought these ideas. And above all, what matured in Lenin's mind in, uh, in exile was the need to really fuse these to step up, if you like, to create a revolutionary party, a Russian party on the equivalent of the, of the German Marxist party or the French party. That was the, uh, the idea. In fact, there was a, a conference called uh, in um, uh, 1898, uh, which was the first conference of the Russian Social Democratic Labour Party. 
There were nine people there. They, st they, they issue a manifesto when the couple of weeks were all arrested, and that's the end of it. Uh, so th that was the situation, a real, uh, many people in exile, repression, difficult conditions, people in exile trying to, to, to smuggle in literature, and Lenin a strike uh, connected, well, I forget, he, he uh, realizes the only way to take the for thing forward is to create a newspaper, a periodical, that could disseminate these ideas of Marxism itself, and way to struggle against the other tendencies. There was another tendency called legal Marxism, very unusual animal, because the, the bourgeoisie in Russia were very weak to, and, and uh, were against the, the autocracy, and they were looking for arguments to justify their own existence. Of course, Marxism says that, you know, uh, under, after feudalism, capitalism will arise as, as a revolutionary uh, a kind of uh, uh, system, which is true. And of course, they, they were looking to, to uh, take out the revolutionary aspects of Marxism and concentrate on, on, on the ideas that, would, that served their purpose. It was a very peculiar uh, uh, development. And of course, uh, Plekhanov and Lenin um, waged war, if you like, an ideological war against the, these tendencies. And uh, by 1900, when uh, the exile uh, came to an end and they were able to leave Siberia, they had written, prepared the way and wanted to get in contact above all with those people abroad, Plekhanov, to establish an all-Russian newspaper. And the name was thought of, of, of the spark of Iskra. And uh, they went to see Plekhanov. He was uh, keen on the idea. I can't go through all the, the details, but they eventually launch it, launch it in 1900. And uh, it becomes a, a very uh, uh, important weapon. It was uh, published abroad because uh, it couldn't publish it in Russia. It was all illegal stuff. They had to smuggle it in. They published it in Geneva, first of all. Later on, they came to London, as was said. Lenin lived in London also in 1902, uh, just up the road there, and uh, where it was able to, to publish Iskra um, uh, and get it smuggled back in a very complicated way. We think we have difficulties. I can imagine that, uh, trying to smuggle, produce a paper in Russia, in London. I know other socialist pieces are hard enough to produce. And then getting it, getting it across uh, the, the continent and smuggle it into Russia to be distributed amongst the workers. They said roughly about 10% of the papers they, they smuggled then actually got through. Shows the, the enormous uh, sacrifices, the enormous determination of these young comrades, because you were talking about Lenin, 23, 24 years of age, very young uh, person, he born in uh, 1870, to give you, give you, the, give you the, the, the timeline. Um, but the, the Iskra newspaper uh, uh, is taken into these workers' circles and it lays the basis for the conquest of these groups, if you like, on, on the genuine Marxism, and they prepare the way for a new Congress, uh, the second Congress of the uh, Russian Social Democratic Party, which in effect is the founding con Congress, which takes place in 1903. But by that time, a book is produced by Lenin, which he had thought of, and his ideas were maturing about how to, how to build the party, how to, what kind of character is the party going to have? Of course, it wasn't going to be it wasn't going to be fundamentally different from what was happening in Germany. And he admired the German party, but under, under illegal uh, conditions and underground conditions, it had to be a, a party of professional revolutionaries. And he writes the book, you know, what is to be done, which is a, a, an attack on on the uh, on spontaneity and so on. Uh, he does make a mistake in the book because he, he copied it from Kautsky, but it's another matter about the idea of consciousness. A consciousness, uh, he thinks. It writes, is brought to the working class, or rather, socialist conscious, rather, is brought to the working class, which it isn't. It, he never repeated that idea. He said he bent the stick the, the, the other way against the, uh, the, the arguments of the economists, he, he admitted later. Um, but the, obviously, the working class, if, uh, through his own experience, throws up uh, collective and, and socialist consciousness. Whether that's carried through is another matter, but it, does, it comes to that conclusion. But the book was a valuable book in training and putting down the marker for the building of the Revolutionary Party of professional revolutionaries. Comrades are going to dedicate their time. They didn't necessarily have to be full time, but they would, in their hearts, they would be full time. In their, in their, in their being, they're, they are there to, to struggle to, to fight to win the workers. Of course, uh, um, the, the building of the party then was, was uh, well, the founding, the Second Congress. I haven't got time to go into the ins and outs, but there's been a lot of myths about the Second Congress. Uh, but there was a, obviously a, a split that took place at the end of the Congress in London, as a matter of fact. They were in Brussels. There was so many, they were infested in a, I think it was, a, uh, it was a flower factory they had. There were so many rats there in infestation. And above all, the police 
uh, uh, forced them out. And they came to London, and they finished the Congress in London. But a split took place between Lenin and Martov. And that was the embryo. An embryo, nothing more. An anticipation, nothing more. And they didn't know it at the time, between Mensheviks and Bolsheviks. The Bolshevik name is, the, is a Russian name for majority, and the Mensheviks is, is the name for the minority, which Martov had. And, it was, and uh, first of all, uh, Martov's views carried the majority all the way through until the very end, and when um, the, uh, the Bund, which is a Jewish uh, organization, walked out because they weren't, they weren't prepared to give them uh, exclusive autonomy. That's an interesting uh, concept. They didn't want to create a federal party. They wanted to create a, a, a unified party, not, not a party of, you know, of Jewish workers, of Russian workers, of Georgian workers, et cetera, et cetera. They wanted to, the working class must be unified into one party, and that's the way they looked at it, and therefore didn't want to split it along national lines. And these walk, they walked out. The economists, which are a very small number, also walked out. So Lenin actually had the majority, and the split took place over, not politics, over who should be on the editorial board of the Obiskna. And Lenin said, look, let's reduce it. Instead of six people who were on there, three people didn't do enough, didn't actually do any work. He said, let's put it in the hands of the three people who did the work, which is Martov, Lenin, and Plekhanov. Uh, and that created a big hoo-ha. Again, I haven't got time to, to go into it. And uh, it was like, a, uh, well, the interior, what, what, they've gone mad. Why the hell are they talk, you know, splitting over a small thing like that? Uh, and what is, the, what is a member, there was a big issue of, you know, what is a member? Is, you know, and if you look at the two, uh, two uh, uh, um, definitions, there's not a great deal in it, in effect. Although one obviously was reflecting the pressures of the, of the petty bourgeoisie, of, 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 of intellectuals who should come into the party and do bugger all, basically. But as Lenin said, no, people have to come in and prove themselves, if you like, and uh, in that way involve themselves in the real life of the party, not just uh, be sympathizers. But it's not a fundamental thing, but you can see how things evolve. And it was over an organizational question that the party split. And it, but it was an, intent, uh, an intent anticipation, because in the reality, the arguments looked at, the Bolsheviks were looked upon, not as Bolsheviks, but the harder people. And the Mensheviks, or, the, or those who supported uh, uh, Martov, are soft people, the softs and the hards. It was anticipation. There was no political differences. But there was that, you could see there were certain uh, you know, uh, sh differences emerging. And that, they really emerged on the basis of events. And that was the 1905 revolution, which again uh, brought the, working, the Russian working class to its feet. An incredible revolution, which no one really expected. It like, came out of the blue in many, many ways. And Lenin's idea, uh, by the way, he's always said, oh, you know, you're only, you're only interested in the small, elitist party of professional revolutionaries, you know, above the working class. In 1905, he says, open the party, recruit the workers, get the young people in. He was very open, the need to, in other words, at each stage of the, of the development of the party, he puts forward a different viewpoint in order to show the needs of the party. And in a revolution, you have to expand, you have to move out, you have to, if like workers are drawing lots of different conclusions and consciousness is changing, and you, you bring them in. It was, it was, as we know, the 1905 revolution was began by a, a, a demonstration led by a, a priest who turned out to be a police agent, but nevertheless, he, um, it, it, there was a bloodbath when they, when they asked to try to present a petition to the Tsar. I think over a thousand, more than a thousand were, were shot down in cold blood, which began the revolution. In other words, from a counter-revolutionary act, the working class began, went on the move for a whole year, culminating in, in, the, in the growth of what we all know as Soviets. Workers' councils were thrown up at that time in Russia, un, unknown before. Didn't, you know, it wasn't like uh, the workers were told to do it. It was the, in other words, extended strike committees. The rule of Russia was, was convulsed in strikes and, and, and uprising and so on and so forth. And therefore, these committees were born out of the struggle. Uh, as we perhaps know, that, that Trotsky was made eventually the head of the Petersburg Soviet. Uh, and uh, it was a great workers' leader at a very young age. I think he was less than 25 years of age. Uh, Lenin actually was in exile at that particular time. The, the division between the, the Mensheviks and the Bolsheviks began to, to, to crystallize a bit over politics, although they both intervened in the revolution as such. But, um, of course, uh, Lenin explained far clearly. He had vision. The thing about Lenin, did he make a mistake? Yes, he made, made a mistake. He probably made a lot of mistakes. But he made far fewer mistakes than most people. 
because there's great understanding of the processes. And therefore, he's able to, able to see, as Trotsky saw, actually, that in the, in the Soviets were the embryo of workers' power, of a new workers' state. No one else understood this, but he understood it. In fact, the Bolsheviks had a sectarian attitude to the Soviets. They thought, oh, we'll, we'll walk into the Soviets and, and we'll declare the party, and then the, if you all agree with the party, then disband in favor of the party. And Lenin said, yeah, that's crazy. It was ultra-left ideas, if you like. But, the, but 1905 was a bit of a, t a turning point because it also identified the role of the liberals, if you like, the, the bourgeoisie in the revolution. This is a revolution. Everybody understood that the revolution facing Russia was uh, you know, to, break, to, to break the aut autocracy, uh, if you like, bring in, in, in uh, constitutional democracy, a, a create a republic, if you like. It was a bourgeois democratic revolution. Sand uh, solved the, the, the land question, because it hadn't really been solved, although the emancipation of the serfs took place in 1861, didn't fundamentally alter the fact that, that the landlords held most of the land. So therefore, the, the land question of, of, of all these questions were, were not resolved by the regime. But capitalism had come late into Russia. That was the point. They created these big, huge factories in, in Petersburg and Moscow. A, a working class was created, very small, but very militant and compact into these big, huge factories. And um, of course, the, the majority of the population, 150 million, were peasants. And yet, uh, uh, what Lenin explained, and Trotsky also, the boss, is that the leadership of the revolution should be in the hands of the working class because the bourgeoisie were now incapable of leading such a revolution. Whereas in the 17th century, the British bourgeois, although it was the petty bourgeois who actually did all the fighting, nevertheless led the revolution. Um, in, in France, uh, likewise. But, but the, now they'd come on the scene too late. They were actually in, uh, hanging on to the coattails of the, of the landlords and the old regime. They were counter-revolutionary. That's the whole point. So you couldn't, whereas the Mensheviks were saying politically, Let's, it's a bourgeois revolution, we must support the bourgeoisie. The workers must support the bourgeoisie because it's their revolution. But Lenin said, no, the, the, the bourgeoisie are counter-revolutionary. They will support the old order. The working class is the only revolutionary class and allied with the peasants to overthrow the regime itself and came forward with the idea of a, of a democratic dictatorship of proletariat and peasantry. Again, a bit of a mouthful. The idea is that the unity of, 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 the, of the peasantry and the working class would carry through the revolution itself. That was a different perspective from the Mensheviks, who, who, who were supporting the bourgeoisie. You know, they were supporting the counter-revolution. Now you see the difference em emerging between the two. Trotsky, on the other hand, who actually had voted with the minority in 1903, although politically did not support them, uh, he had an independent view, saying an incredible view, which was called the permanent revolution, that the working class should come to power and not just hold power, it should carry through the expropriation of capitalism and, and as, a, as, a, as a starting point of a world revolution. This had never been known before. Good God, this was an incredible theory, which was confirmed in 1917, as a matter of fact. And therefore, Trotsky, although it wasn't part of Lenin's uh, 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 faction, because that's all it was at this stage, the Bolshevik Party, by the way, was not created until 1912. They were both part of the Mensheviks and the, and the Bolsheviks, were both factions of the Russian Social Democratic Labour Party. They did, they did sometimes have their different conferences, their own separate conferences. Sometimes they had a unified conference in London in 1907. Uh, the, well, the church been knocked down. They had a, a conference here, a unified conference, Mensheviks, Bolsheviks, Trotsky was here. Uh, Rosa Luxemburg was here. I mean, <laughs> you know, all I'm saying is, but then the, it was the, then the, the differences emerged and they, they, they split a, p apart again. And this is a process that takes place a number of years, by the way, where political differences really start to emerge, as we, can, as we say, between Menshevism and Bolshevism. But it never started in that way. It took a long time for that to differentiate on political lines. 1905, defeated revolution. Terrible conditions, harsh reaction. Of course, uh, the, uh, the Bolsheviks talked about boycotting the, uh, the, the Duma because it was rotten in favor of the revolution. But now there's an ebb in the revolution. In fact, there's, there's, there's a terrible reaction 
leading to people committing suicide even. They were so, they were so um, uh, 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 impacted on them that they were despair. And the party began to decline. There were ultra-left tendencies emerging in the party. There were idealist tendencies emerging in, right, the, in, the, in the Russian Social Democratic Party and also in the Bolsheviks. They'd made mistakes. They were a bit ultra-left. Le Lenin explained you shouldn't boycott uh, in, in a period of downswing. You know, you should use every little aspect to try and put forward your, your views. So therefore, he was a minority of one, by the way. You know, there were other uh, different uh, um, tendencies emerging. Uh, um, a liquidationist tendency was called, uh, which was trying to, to dissolve the illegal part of the party and try and move it onto to a legal uh, uh, um, operation, which is impossible under, under the conditions taking place. They had to be fought. So there's a, a lot of struggles within the Bolshevik party. A lot of uh, arguments took place. You, you had this idea it's a monolithic party. On the contrary, even Lenin was in the minority of, of one <laughs> on quite a few occasions. But nevertheless, it was the, this experience the, and the enormous difficulties of, the, of this, uh, this counter-revolutionary period that they tried to just hold the thing together, holding the party together, holding the ideas together, defending the ideas. And that's why Lenin, yes, he came to, to London in 1908 to write a book, you know, uh, on the materialism and imperial criticism, another lovely title that we often uh, like to, to quote. But uh, again, against these, these, these uh, idealist uh, viewpoint that was emerging in the Bolshevik faction, actually, and around uh, Bogdanov and so on. So they were, Lenin was trying to combat and maintain the, idea, the fundamental correct ideas of Marxism in tactics and in strategy at that particular moment. The party was, was, was collapsing, but 1910, uh, I, I saw someone that, they, basically, there was hardly left. You know, there, such was the collapse of the party, or the, uh, that there was very little left of the Bolshevik party. It had to be rebuilt, and that came with a revival of the working class in 1911, 1912. In other words, there was a revival of the working class. The Bolsheviks began to reassess and reconnect, and eventually launch a newspaper Pravda, yeah, although he robbed it off uh, uh, Trotsky, which he was a bit annoyed at. Uh, the name Pravda was, was launched in 19, 1912, and the party, the Bolshevik party, who then took the decision to, or the, 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 the faction decided to call itself a party. It would be the party, and they would fight for power. And they were in a very difficult position because internationally, you know, Rosa Luxemburg, uh, uh, Kautsky, all the other leaders. They supported the Mensheviks, no one supported the Bolsheviks. So they're in a very, very difficult circumstances to hold out, you know, against everybody, uh, conviction of their ideas, understanding the perspective and line of march. That takes a bold man, a bold person. And that was Lenin. And therefore, he comes to the, uh, the realization in 1912, such as the groundwork that they were doing and the revival of the labor movement, that four-fifths of the working class who could read Red Pravda were, so, were looking towards the Bolsheviks. Quite a remarkable turnaround in the situation. But that was all cut across, as we know, by the World War in 1914, the biggest betrayal of, of uh, international working class in its history, where the Marxist leaders, Kautsky, the, the German party, of the, which, which was held up as a model even by Lenin, had betrayed the working class and went to war, decided to vote for the war credit, as opposed to those who stood out like Rosa Luxemburg and Karl Liebknecht. And the movement was shattered because of the World War. Internationally, in 2015, they had the Zimmerwald Conference. And, and, and Lenin had the joke that you could get all the internationalists of the world into two stagecoaches. And that's what it's all about in, in, in 1915, that, you know? You know, and the people who supported internationalism, you know, John McLean in, in, uh, in, in Scotland, of uh, James Connolly in uh, Ireland. Uh, you had the, obviously the, the, the Bolsheviks of Luxembourg, of Liebnik, of the Serbs. There was a number around, but they're very small. And yet they had the perspective, the international is dead, long live the third international. God, what a bold perspective. That was in the, in the depth of the war. Look, the idea of a new international, a new banner held by a tiny little number of people, my God, gives, you, gives us a bit of a sense of proportion, doesn't it, about what, uh, what, what, how the greater forces we have 
in Britain and internationally compared to what it was there. And yet within two years, the Bolsheviks were in power. That shows the enormous changes that can take place on the basis of events themselves. But the war was like a, was like a, like a, a dead blanket over the whole movement. Uh, uh, Lenin, uh, as he did his philosophical studies and writings, as a matter of fact, he, he sharpened up his theory and so on and so forth. And he gave a speech in January 1917 to the young socialists in Switzerland that he, well, you know, you know, the future will be good for the comrades, but I won't see the revolution, unfortunately. Right? That was January 1917. Uh, and one of the reasons for that, they were large out of touch. You know, we didn't have the internet then. <laughs> the newspapers weren't full of the moods of the working class. You didn't know what was happening. And particularly in, 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 in dictatorships, you don't know. You know what the real mood is, how explosive, you know it's underneath, but you don't. And suddenly the whole thing blows up in February 1917. The Bolsheviks had 8,000 members at that time, only 8,000. The revolution, the second revolution takes place. Soviets are thrown up again. But the people who, 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 who come into the Soviets look to the most well known figures. They, they, they were mainly of the Menshevik leaders. And uh, they got a majority in the uh, uh, the Soviets at that particular time. The Bolsheviks were a tiny, tiny minority. But nevertheless, the whole perspective had to be changed. Well, as I said, in 1905, Lenin's position, the Bolsheviks' position, was it was a bourgeois revolution led by the working class, but it would form a, a democratic republic. Now, he says, towards the conclusion, no, this should be after, the, after February, this must be another revolution to continue what's being done to carry out a socialist revolution. In other words, he'd come over to Trotsky's position of permanent revolution. Not a and he had to fight within the party. Lenin had to wage a war, an ideological war, at the April conference. He, had, he wrote a number of letters to the Bolsheviks, you know, uh, letters from afar, because the Bolsheviks in Russia were making compromises, were giving in to the pressures of, uh, of social patriotism and giving too much concessions to the Mensheviks and, and the Democrats, and Lenin came back and laid the law down. One thing is very clear, he didn't mess about, you know, and uh, laid the law down politically and argued the case. They thought he was mad. They thought he was a bloody Trotskyist, you know. We come back here telling us we, should, we talk about a second socialist revolution. But we've been preaching over the last 20 years about the, dem the democratic revolution, and, and uh, Lenin, forcefully argued and won over the ranks, many of the, of the Bolshevik ranks themselves, and changed the policy of the Bolshevik party and put it on the road to power after April 1917. And with that, you have the, the development then of, of, a, of, of revolution and counter-revolution in that particular year. You know, the enormous successes of, 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 of the beginnings of successes. And the, the ideas they put forward wasn't down with the, uh, uh, the provisional government, because there was a government elected, a, a, a bit mainly based of, on, of liberals, first of all. But then the, the, uh, the, the uh, social revolutions and Mensheviks joined in. And Lenin's position, down with the capitalist ministers, break with these people, carry out a real revolution. In other words, put in very skillfully, putting arguments forward to undermine the liberals and the, and the reformists to win over and gain a year from the workers themselves who are looking for a way out. In other words, he's skillfully connected with the advanced layers of workers. And it's the events, isn't it? July days, the Bolshevik party's thrown underground. They're trying to hunt down Lenin, yet he's forced to, to run into exile, you know, to, to, to go to Finland. Uh, the others are rest. Trotsky joins the Bolshevik party at that time. He brings in 4,000 workers from an organization called the Mezryonsky and is elected to the Central Committee. Trotsky is a great figure at this time. He was outside the party, but comes to the party at this uh, crucial uh, time of the Bolshevik party. Uh, Lenin says, once he understood about the question of conciliation, there was no greater Bolshevik than Lenin, as the, than Trotsky, says Lenin. Shows, the, again, the statue of this person. And it was, it was Lenin and Trotsky leads the revolution. Because although they win a majority in the Soviets by September, in Petrograd, in, in Leningrad, a whole number of other uh, 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 Soviets come over to the Bolsheviks because of the Kornilov uprising and the fact that the Bolsheviks were able to have a united front policy to win over the best workers, which, which they were successful. 
the when a majority in the Soviets, which is the alternative embryo state, if you like, and then the question of an insurrection is, is posed at that time. And of course, uh, there's even an argument over that. By, by October, even Zinoviev and Kamenev, the leaders who were with, were with Lenin for years and years and years, oppose the insurrection and go to a, a, another newspaper to say this, that they planted an insurrection, for Christ's sake, you know. And, uh, and, and Lenin's furious, of course, as you, as you can imagine it. Uh, but nevertheless, they managed the skill of Trotsky to win over uh, not only, or build rather, the, a military uh, 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 a committee in defense of the, of, of, the, of the revolution. They always pose the idea of defending the revolution. Absolutely right. Don't, don't uh, send out the troops from Petrograd. In other words, the whole idea and strategy was now to, to, uh, to carry out a successful insurrection, which they do on the 25th of October or the 7th of November, which happens to be Trotsky's birthday. But that was a great pre president, I'm sure. Um, and they come to power. And uh, the, the, there's a huge congress of, of, of the Soviets organized. And immediately they organize a, a, a program. And Lenin put, puts forward this great speech about we're now going to begin the, the, the creation of, of a world socialist order that the Russian Revolution could never exist uh, alone. This is the only opening shot of the world revolution. And that's the beauty of it. This is not a nationalist you know, road to socialism. This is an internationalist uh, view that the revolution in Russia was the spark. That was, you know, the, 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 the chain of world capitalism was broken its weakest link. And Lenin epitomized all the experience of that period and, and concentrated in the building of the Bolshevik party and the need to, to carry out in words, or rather in deeds, what the words were telling them years ago. That's the great thing about the Bolsheviks. Even Rosa Luxemburg, I'll, I can quote it later, later, later on, say, they did it. They didn't talk about it. They did it. That's the great uh, contribution of Bolshevism. And it's a worldwide pheno phenomenon. They come to power. Lenin issues a series of decrees on land, on peace, on workers' control, on the right of nations to self-determination. He tries to put down markers because they don't know what, how, what the situation is going to harm. They're still in the war. The Germans are still, in, uh, still, still very much on the offensive against uh, uh, Russia. And now, of course, the revolution, when the bourgeoisie recognized what has happened, that the Bolsheviks have come to power, and this is not like another socialist government. On the contrary, it's a huge threat to them. So they embark 21 foreign armies invade Russia in order to destroy the revolution. And of course, uh, inside Russia as well, First of all, I'm going to, again, it's like a history lesson about Russia as well as Lenin, unfortunately, and uh, you can't deal with every single aspect. But of course, in, inside Russia as well, we have um, uh, 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 those who are, who are ultra left, we're in the, the left social revolutionaries, who think there should be a revolutionary war. It doesn't matter what the consequences are. And Lenin said, no, we have to conserve the forces and, 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 and appeal for revolution abroad. That's what Trotsky was trying to do in the in the uh, negotiations in Brest-Litovsk, appeal to the, to the German workers, have a revolution, have a revolution. But it didn't come until the following November, in November 1918, when the, the German workers roll up. You had the beginnings of the world revolution. And therefore, what is created then is not just the Bolshevik party, but, a, but the whole perspective of a world revolution. And the idea of a third international takes shape. In March 1919, they hold a Congress to establish the first Congress of the Communist International, the Third International. At this time, it becomes a mass force. Bolshevism becomes, communism becomes a grip now. In, and parties are created. The Social Democratic Party splitting. And huge communist parties are created. Huge mass communist parties for the first time come onto the stage. You think this is it now, this is going to be the opportunity. And the, and the the Congresses of the International were a school because the Bolsheviks had a huge experience of 20 years of underground work, of, of, of education, of development. People in the West, in Britain, didn't have that, so they had to be schooled. They had to learn quickly because of the events. And that was the idea. A university, if you like, of the working class was the Communist International. But of course, the, the, yes, the, uh, the army, they defeated the Civil War. And yes, there's, there was a red terror, that's true, in order to fight the white terror of the capitalist counter-revolution itself. 
And of course, all these, these writers, oh, look at Lenin, oh, bloodthirsty, this, that. They were fighting a bloody civil war. They had to fight for their lives. If they had lost it, they'd all be strung up on the nearest lamppost. And these, these petty bourgeois journalists, these petty bourgeois apologists, then talk about the crimes, the crimes. Not the crimes of imperialism, because that's what the, the, the reality was. They sent the armies to overthrow the Russian state. As we know, the, uh, they were defeated. They were defeated, but Russia was in a very bad way. You know, in, in 1921, 22, industry was shattered. The whole thing was, was collapsing in Petrograd and, 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 and Moscow. Half the population went to, they were starving, went back to the villages to get, to, to get uh, food. The whole thing was, it was in a hell of a state. Of course, then we had the rise of a bureaucracy. The, the officials started to get back. The only way out of this dilemma, as Lenin explained, was world revolution. And it was, all, it was always the perspective. Unfortunately, the revolutions were betrayed in Germany, in France, and other countries. The, the Communist parties weren't strong enough at that stage. And therefore, unfortunately, you had the isolation of the Russian Revolution, and with that, the growth of Stalinism. Lenin dies in 1924. He's the, last, the last struggle he, he conducts in 1922, before he's paralyzed. Is a block with Trotsky against the rising bureaucracy within the Soviet Union itself, and where he puts out the need to remove Stalin uh, from from, uh, from from office, and the need to to if you like, for, uh, for, well, the last testament is worth reading to show the balance sheet and so on and so forth. But as I've run out of time, as you know, I've just gone through it like a an express train, uh, a fashion express right right through the history of the Russian Revolution. And therefore, you, could, you can't do it justice. Lenin's role and Lenin's ability and Lenin's ideas is what I haven't got the I've got the, the the 45 volumes in English. I must admit, I haven't read them all. I've read quite a, quite a few. 45 volumes of the work of this genius, if you like, applying it to all different uh, 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 all different situations. That's the theory that we want. That's our theory. That's the whole essence. In order for us to create a successful revolution, we have to absorb the ideas of Lenin, as well as the other great Marxists as well. And therefore, I hope I've given a little bit of a flavor, a little teeny bit, in order to whet your appetite, to read the literature we've created. I brought out uh, Ted and, and Alan's book uh, of uh, Lenin, Trotsky, what they really stood for. Again, well, if you haven't got it, you should get that. Or Bolshevism, another book of, of Ted's book of Russia, from revolution to counter-revolution, comrades. We are the Leninists. We have the future. Let's go for it.